see things like a boxer, a lot of boxers ask me, said, well, nobody fights this. Says, why, why are they doing this on a dummy? So that's a posture, it's a movement in time, it's a transitional movement. A lot of times, if I perform what we call a poxal and the lopsal, sometimes he will trap my hand down like this, okay? That's one way. And the other way is he'll trap it together. Now this motion here is the third motion. When you teach, he'll turn, or move in. Again, slow motion, this is one, this is two, this is three. You'll see this, he'll put the foot like that. And people look at it and say, how do you spar with this? Uh, keep watching my look at that. This is for close quarter and it's a movement in time. So when I trap the barrier and I come back, he'll come across and you'll see the, the knee, his foot will jam and he's closer over here, you see over here, and back. Okay, so that's basically what the movement teaches. A lot of things in the, in the dummy and they have different meanings. And if you ask different teachers, they have different meanings. Like uh, a good example, on the third one, they go one, two, and one, two, back and hit. Well, actually, all that is, is this is teaching you how to parry this way. But this one feeds the left hand like this, and you're firing. So I'll do this slowly. See how this one cuts the move back? That's that motion here. But many people, well, they don't understand it because it's a dumb. All right, you guys. Well, I'm back with my client, Joe. And the thing is, is that this is a great way to kind of showcase some of the capabilities of the book drop. Because I know a lot of people look at this and like, what the hell is this? What is all this, you know, wooden pegs and stuff? But here's the thing, I use this to help me with my boxing training. And I'm gonna show you how to approach it. So right here on the move jump, I got this peg, right? I'm in left knee, sometimes I practice left knee, sometimes I practice right knee. I pretend this, this peg is various attack patterns, right? So the first one is just a jab. I'm just thinking that this is a jab. So what what would I do against a jab? I just rear hand catch, rear hand catch, rear hand catch. Rear hand catch, rear hand catch. That's it. I just do this. And you see, it gives me that tactile proprioception feedback that, hey, my hand just hit something. You see? So, I face Joe now. Joe, you're, you're there. And here's the thing. He's, I'm going to back up to this where I can't move back. He can hit me. So, Joe, just throw your jabs at him. What did I just do? I just did the same thing over here, and I stay close to this peg, pretending that's an extension of the jab about to hit me. Rear hand catch. Okay? Alright, what's another thing I can pretend this thing is doing to me? It could be a hook. Alright, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna cover. I'm gonna cover. What are, how am I covering? Like this, as if the person's throwing a bare knuckle punch at me. Not 60 ounce gloves, but I just do this. I'm covering, grabbing the back of my head, and really cover here. So now Joe, he's facing me. Joe, I want you to go left knee hooks. That's it. And here's the thing. I can't back away. I'm within this range. And you see how I went here and practiced the appropriate reception tactile feedback right here. And then over here with Joe, Joe throws his hook. It's there. All right? I'll see I can practice on the other side. If I'm here, right side. What does that mean? Joe, throw your right hooks. Thank you, Joe. You see? So already I'm showing you guys how I use this to work on various defense. Rear head catch. Cover, cover, cover. Uh, can I work on some slips? Yeah, I move this peg. And what I do is I'm here, the peg's right there, I'm slipping. 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 I can even work on slipping with a pair. Slip, pair. Slip, pair. Slip parry, slip parry. So we're here. So now Joe's gonna throw his jab. I slip the jab. Cross. Yeah. Cross. There you go. Jab. Cross. Jab. Cross. I'm working on my parry at the same time as a slip. There you go. Now if he just wants to throw his jab, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna sit outside inside. So jab, 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 jab. You see, if, if he throws his cross, I can sit the outside of the cross, I can sit on the inside. Outside. Inside and, I can, and it can lead me to some of my JKD training or my Kung Fu training. So there, I just did slips. Okay, what else can I do against this thing? I can do ducks. I can work on hitting the middle or ducking. Alright, Joe, go me some looks. Guys, so this is solid. Metal and, metal and wood. This is 
just a pig. I pretend that there was a jab, a cross, and some hooks. I get, well, if you ask me if I don't have a short amount of time, Joe, I can go off to that heavy back and wall on you. But is that heavy back going to give me anything to work on defense except for my imagination? This thing, how do I just make this work for me? I mean, a lot. Of it doesn't move, so I have, to, I have to use my imagination to pretend. But if someone asks you, like, hey, I want you to work on defense. Go up towards the head back. Or, hey, Joe, I want you to work on defense. Maybe I want you to do a rear head catch and cross hook after. Which one would you prefer? In a sense, the jump or the head back? Well, for real, it's obviously. Yeah. So there you guys have it. I just wanted to show you guys how to use these tools in a way that it makes more sense. The very first thing that I want to do is get better against a boxer. Because that's going to be probably the number one opponent I'm going to face. If, it's on, if we're standing here. Not many people in, in America use kicks. So I'm not as worried, but I know there's a lot of good boxers out there with good hand speed, good head movement, good foot, footwork. So I gotta deal with that first, so that's what I wanna train. Just like on the ground, probably most guys are doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So definitely wanna roll with those guys, get to know their, their arm, get to know where their, ten, their tendencies are, so that then I can use the thumb of the John Fawn aspects to, to counter it, because if they've never seen it, it's harder to deal with, you see. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and just showcasing how to use other tools to, to enhance and to progress, because let's face it, Joe, how often do you have a partner to trade boxing with? Once a week. Once a week, yeah! Same. Yeah, and then me, same thing. I mean, I really have built Joe up so that he could be a great partner so he, that I can improve myself, but most of the time, I'm by myself. 99% of the time, I'm training alone, so, you gotta do what you can to progress. And you know, just wanted to showcase this in a, in a light that maybe now gives you a better perspective of how to utilize the move job. Okay, you guys take care. Until next time. All right, Joe, good job. All right. So, yes, you're gonna head outside. What am I doing, my man? We do squat, heavy hooks, oh, oh, back to the field. Yes, back to the field. Tap the chair. Tap the chair. We're doing three minute rounds. We're doing another yeah, three, so we're doing water. three minute rounds. We're going to cover it. How many rounds? We're going to do three rounds. Because the first round, you're going to squat, and then you're going to throw single, double, left. triple to the left. So, yeah. So, so you see, you squat, single, squat, double, squat.